Hey guys, Zeke here, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're talking about the one and only Canon EFS 18 to 55 kit lens from long ago. The reason why I'm talking about it now is because I have recently modified it from an EFS, which is for APS-C Canon cameras, to EF mounts, which now you can pretty much put it onto speed boosters, get a wider field of view, and obviously a shallow depth of field because you're placing it onto a speed booster. And you know, if you're gonna use 1080 mode, you can zoom it out to 24 mil and you can still use it with no vignetting. Other lenses like the 17 to 55 f2.8 or the 18 to 135 Canon lens, you know, even when you put on a speed booster and try to take photos, even if you just zoom it out to different focal ranges, you get vignetting across the whole frame. So with this 18 to 55, even if you put on a speed booster and just zoom it out to 24 mil, even with the speed booster, you can take photos, you can you know, shoot 1080 mode and all that stuff. If you have a Canon M50 or anything like that, then you can still use it on a speed booster. You don't have to crop in to 4K or anything like that. So that's one great thing about this lens. And you know, I've even tested it without the speed booster and it is a stunner. The color, the sharpness, the detail of this lens is still remarkable. And you know, even if you use it, you won't even realize it's a kit lens. People won't realize it's a kit lens after looking at the footage that this kit lens produces. So man, absolutely go for it if you see it below $100. And if you are planning to get it modified to an EF mount, then you know, absolutely go for it. I've got lots of footage to share with you guys today. I even went out to the Shrine of Remembrance to the Botanical Gardens in Melbourne and put it to the test, which I'll show you later on. So first things first, how does the modification work? Well, at the back of the lens, it's an EFS mount, and in order to switch it to an EF mount, you need to hop onto eBay and then look for the EFS to EF uh, kit mount for the 18 to 55 EFS lens. Now, this is the STM, the other ones won't work. You know, the, I think, Mark II and the Mark I. What you need is 18 to 55 EFS STM lens. So once you have the right lens, then it's really up to you whether or not you think the adapter is important for you. Uh, for me personally, I think it's remarkable that you can put on a speed booster and you know shoot photos up to well 24 mil and above. So here are some sample clips that I shot with my Canon M and Magic Lantern RAW. Uh, this is without the speed booster and it was all shot in 50 frames per second slow motion RAW with 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio and a resolution of around 1736. So it's not really full HD 1920 by 1080. It's a bit less, but you know, you get 50 frames per second and the quality is absolutely gorgeous. The colors are all there. And overall this kit lens brings a great, fantastic filmic look that we all love. Now to switch mount, it's not really hard at all. All you need to do is go onto the back of the lens and then just unscrew those four screws. And then right at the back of the tip of the mount, you have these tiny two little screws that you just unscrew and then, you know, pretty much ready to mount the EF and put those screws back in place and you're pretty much done. Now I have tested this kit lens, the 18 to 55, against this older brother, the more expensive one, the Canon 17 to 55 f2.8. I love that lens, but I have to say, I've been absolutely blown away in comparison with the 18 to 55. I mean, you couldn't even tell a difference if I didn't tell you. So here are the results. And as you can see, here is the Canon 17 to 55. I'm shooting around f2.8 aperture. And this is with the speed booster. Now the problem with the 17 to 55 is, you know, even if you shoot with 1080 mode, you'll still get vignetting. If you zoom it out to 55, you still get vignette. With the 18 to 55, you have absolutely no problems there. You can zoom in, zoom out and you'll have no vignetting from 24 mil all the way up to 55 mil. If you plan on taking photos, you can't do that with the 17 to 55 and the speed boosters, but you can do that with the 18 to 55 from 24 mil all the way up to 55 mil. You definitely can take some raw photos without any you know, vignetting or black stuff in your frame, which is fantastic. All right, so the other day I took the Canon EOS M with Magic Lantern RAW and the 18 to 55 out on a bit of a test run. You know, it's when the adapter first came in and I was like so excited to try it out. So I'll share that experience with you guys now. And just to mention, I also share my settings of the slow motion that I use whilst on the trip as well. So pay attention to that. I shot, I think 46 frames per second, uh, but with the horse videos before I did 50 frames per second, which is a bit less reliable, but take a look at the clips, see how you like the lens and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are of this little guy and whether or not you think you might purchase this lens. Hey guys, Zeke here, hope you're doing well. Here I am at the Shrine of Remembrance in Melbourne. It's just behind you right over there. I'm looking at it now. And I'm gonna to put to the test the Canon 18 to 55 EFS kit lens on my Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. Now, 
This kit lens has been hacked recently. I've put a new mount on it, an EF mount, so I can put onto my speed booster and get a wider field of view, shallower depth of field, all that good stuff. And I'm gonna test out different flavors of raw video with this camera, with Magic Lantern, and just see how it all plays out with this kit lens. To my left, we have the Royal Botanical Gardens. That's where we're gonna go after this and just have fun shooting some raw video on the Canios M. So without further ado, let's get into it. Might get some uh, 2.8K raw, just of the landscape shot there. And uh, might zoom it out to 55 mil after I shoot some 18 mil. Just see the difference, you know, from the wide end versus the long end. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot some 5K FRTP of this, uh, this building over here and just test out how 5K FRTP looks like with the 18 to 55 on my speed booster. All right, guys, I'm gonna get some architectural shots of the Shrine of Remembrance. I'm gonna shoot some uh, 2.5K raw, 16 by nine, with 18 to 55 hacked onto my speed booster. And uh, hopefully I'll get some good clarity out of this lens. You know, it is a kit lens, but uh, I'm keeping my hopes up. Alright guys, here we are at the Royal Botanical Gardens in Melbourne and you know, the sun's just gone behind the clouds uh, but that's okay, we're going to test out some 2.9K, 2.5K and some slow motion in 1080 mode, around 48 FPS and see how it performs with the kit lens. Now for the majority of this shoot I am going to use the speed booster uh, but for the slow motion, for the 48 FPS in the 1080 mode I'll be using the basic adapter for that and just see how this lens plays out without the speed booster. So uh, without further ado, let's go and test it out. All right, so I'm shooting some 2.5K raw here. It's a beautiful, surreal area. And I'm just gonna see the quality at 18 mil with the speed booster. All right, so I've shot a few clips now and I can tell that the 18 to 55 has beautiful Canon colors right off the bat. The sharpness is good. And I mean, for a kit lens that costs less than 100 bucks is absolutely phenomenal. You don't have to get the speed booster modification, you know, with the EF mounts, uh, but it does come as a bonus if you want the extra stop of light and a wider field of view. Uh, but later on, I'm gonna test with just a basic hollow adapter with no glass, no speed booster, and see how that performs as well. Uh, but right now, I think the speed booster is doing a fantastic job in getting a nice wide field of view and utilizing the whole glass. It's absolutely remarkable. Here is a bit of a bokeh test. You can see the bokeh there. And then as I focus onto the tree, it's nice, it's gradual, it's smooth. All right, and out of focus again, there you go, there's the bokeh. That's pretty much the max bokeh you can get with 2.5K raw. 
Okay, so right now I've switched to 5K FRTP, which has more shallow depth of field. You know, you only get about two times crop in comparison to 2.5K, which has around a 3.2 to 3.5 times crop. So let's get some shallow depth of field going. Let's test out the 18 to 55 with the speed booster in 5K FRTP. Okay, so right now I'm just doing a bit of a vlog test. I've got my selfie mirror out by Nicey Rig. And this is what it looks like in 5K FRTP mode. Got the stabilization on, just doing a bit of a test. This is what the Canon 18 to 55 looks like with the speed booster in the 5K FRTP mode. All right, we have some great shots here. Time to get some depth of field shots. 46 frames per second in the 1080 mode. I've switched to the basic Canon adapter. Otherwise you'd get vignetting and stuff like that. So let's give this a test. If you want to know how I'm getting these slow motion settings, then it's at presets, then the 1080p, 30, 46, and 38 FPS mode. Once you've selected that, then you need to set your aspect ratio to 2.35 to 1, and then bit depth 10 bit, and then pretty much just set 25 FPS to on. Once you've done that, they're pretty much the settings that I'm doing to shoot uh, this scene right here. I'm also doubling the frame rate, so you know, if I'm shooting at 46 FPS, then I'm roughly getting around uh, 184th of the shutter. I think the next one is like 1 100th. So 184th or anything close to 190 should be good enough. All right, so I've just set 2.8K raw. I'm actually really shooting around 2.9K in the 3K mode. And I'm gonna test out, see how this kit lens does with these high resolutions. All right, let me just get this landscape going first. It's so easy to nail focus with this lens because, you know, like majority of his shots in focus. So let's get this low shot. Now I'm always checking my framing, so I'm just tapping on the screen right here. Perfect. For this shot, you can see the nice reflection of the sky and the water, which is fantastic. I might do a bit of a pan here, starting from the bottom and work my way up. It would be nice to have a CPR filter too, which I don't have on me, unfortunately. All right guys, so that's pretty much the test of the Canon 18 to 55 EFS kit lens with the Canon US M and Magic Lantern RAW. We shot in different flavors of RAW, you know, 2.5K, 2.9K, a bit of slow motion here and there, some 5K anamorphic FRTP. And we've also tested the speed booster and the non-speed booster adapter. Let me know what you guys think about this, you know, 18 to 55 kit lens and whether or not this is something that you'd be looking into. Uh, for me personally, I think it's a great lens in the kit and I'm definitely gonna be keeping it for sure. You know, I've got the 10 to 18, I've got the 55 to 250, and I think that the 18 to 55 makes a great budget all around a lens for all purposes. You know, you've got beautiful colors, beautiful sharpness, and overall, I think for the price, it is a remarkable lens that you can modify to an EF mount. 
Now I found with this lens that it does flare a bit, you know, once you've modified it, the glass is just a little bit exposed from where the mount area is. And so, you know, if you get direct sunlight or even sunlight on the side of the lens, then you get lots of flaring going on. So something like the matte box here, this is the small rig uh, mini light matte box. I think it's less than a hundred bucks and it does the job in just, you know, removing this glares and the flares from the sunlight uh, if you don't want them in your shot. So I highly recommend this small rig matte box and the 18 to 55 lens shot in 2.9K, 2.5K looks absolutely glorious. Beautiful Canon colors and there's really not much to complain about, especially compared to the 17 to 55, which costs like, I don't know, five times more than this lens, uh, which is absolutely absurd. So yeah, 18 to 55 is an absolute stunning lens. So that's it guys, that was pretty much the trip. And I have to say that after testing the 18 to 55 for a long while, it is a fantastic lens for documentary shooting, music videos, all that stuff. And when you put on a speed booster, you get a stop of light. So from f3.5, it would be around f2.8 equivalent. Um, also, you know, including the crop factors of the modes that you choose to shoot in. But overall, it's just an absolute beast of a lens for the price. If you guys enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.